My wife is so stinking excited. It's been a long winter and spring is here and she's gonna show you what we're doing so we can keep our family fed. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Kylene. And I'm Jonathan, and we are talking about gardening today, and Mama's been sad because we have had a very cold and wet winter, and we love the water because we've been so dry, but the cold is getting old. And the dark, right? It's been storming more than usual, and so here it is, almost April, and by now, I've usually got a lot of stuff going on, and I just haven't been able to. And so um, I have gone out and got pruning done. And one of the things I think is really important to remember is pruning is so good for your plants. I know when John watches me prune, he just about wants to cry. Like he's like, that plant worked all last year to grow that and you just cut it off. But the truth is that the better pruning job you do, the healthier and the um, more productive your plant is going to be. So don't be afraid to get out there and prune your plant, even though it might make some people cry. In fact, I, one... I just have to walk away. Um, another thing that we've done while we've been inside is a couple months ago, I created a video and I had organized all my seeds. However, they were in this really cool binders and, and looked really nice. But um, because of some comments on the channel, um, I realized that there was actually a better way to do it than what I was doing. And at first I'm like, oh, that's really nice, but I can't afford it. But my daughter-in-law was watching the ads and she found these at Michael's. So these, um, and these were only $12. Usually they're like $45. And so of course I had to snatch them up, but these are intended to hold pictures. They're super cool because they're all in this little case and then they have individual compartments so I can have all my spinach seeds in here, right? Some seeds don't work because they're too big, but for the most part, this is a fantastic way to organize my seeds. And then they're actually organized into summer and spring seeds. Well, okay, so I've got my herbs and then I've got my flowers and then I've got summer and I've got spring seeds. And the reason why I've separated them that way is because when I'm planting in the spring, I'm planting a whole different kind kinds of plants. And so by separating that way, I know what I can plant in the spring. And usually those spring seeds, you can plant again later in the fall and get a fall crop. So it was good. I, that's how I like to, to divide them up. Now, another thing that she did in this process is got rid of a lot of the really, really old seeds. Yeah. Uh, some that, yeah, probably just aren't gonna grow. We want good, reliable seed. Um, of course, some seed is better than no seed, but. I think she's got a few, so. I have a few seeds. So she did weed out some of the, the old, really, really old stuff. And now I have the capacity for more seeds. Just never <laughs> It's ends. a never ending battle. Okay, but now that I've talked about my seed storage, let me show you what we've done with our seeds so far. A few months ago, I started doing my winter sown seeds. There were some that have to, had to be cold stratified, so that's perfect for winter sowing. And there's a video, I'll leave a, um, link if you'd like to go check out that video. But what we do is you just take like a milk carton or a juice bottle and you cut it and leave it so it hinges. You put drainage holes in the bottom and you plant the seeds and then you tape this shut and you just go stick it outside. It rains on it, it snows on it, it just goes crazy. You don't even have to think about it. Watch it for water if you're not having a really wet spring, but check this out. These are beautiful. This is spinach in here, and this is a variety of cabbage. Now my little onions, they're not quite ready to go yet. They still have a little bit to work on, but this is a really great method um, for starting. There are things that are hotter, like my summer plants that we talked about. Remember, these are spring. They tolerate cold really well. These are summer, and some of the summer don't do as well in winter sown. Um, the peppers, I have never had really good success with peppers. I have with tomatoes. But so I started these peppers indoor. They are on a heat mat and this is a super cool um, starting tray. We went to, oh, where was it? It was a, um, a tour, no, but it was a tour of that oh, greenhouse. Yes, yes. And this is from Never Sink Farms and this is what they use in that greenhouse. And you can see, you just put your finger under there and it'll pull this out but it doesn't drip into the bottom. And then when it comes to watering, I just water the bottom here so it makes it super easy. But this has been on a heat mat. And then these are tomatoes that I just planted a couple days ago. Whenever I first plant them, I put handy wrap over them 
so that that helps keep it nice and moist, which helps with the germination. So these are both back there underneath lights, while these have just been outside. Both of these methods can work really well. This method is a lot less work. But now what I'm gonna do with all of these, I have these cups and I reuse them over and over again. You can tell things get crossed out and the new things written on it. Um, some really good people put labels on them, but that's a little bit too much work for me. And what I'll do is I'll just replant all of these in here. And then I have these little dish pans. These are just dollar store dish pans. And I'll line the cups up in here and so that they can drain and so that they're all in one little place. It's just a really cheap way of being able to accomplish that. But right now these are ready to be transplanted into the cups. And so are these. And with this, you can tell they are all kind of in here tight together. But I'll just pull this out a little bit and show you. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of tease this apart a little bit. And here I've got one and I will just plant it in there. And then I will let it grow just a little bit bigger um, and as soon as I get some nice non-frozen days where the ground is, is um, thawed enough that I can plant something, these can totally go outside and start producing. When stocking up on your garden supplies, don't forget the garden soil. This, is, this potting soil is an important part of getting all this started so that you can have a successful garden. And we picked this up at our local nursery. We have a fabulous local nursery who sells. This is exactly what they start all of theirs in and they sell it in these bags. So that, that's really handy for us. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll wait till the end of the season and I will get the, all the potting soil that's been closed out. I like the organic and I like the kinds that doesn't have fertilizer in it to start my plants. But um, that is the best way to do it last year there was nothing left over. And so this year I'm having to pay full price and that kind of hurts a little bit. But think about the soil because if you're just using the regular soil that you have, unless you've really, really got some impressive soil out there, um, you're gonna have a hard time successfully starting your seedling. So um, this is something really good to invest in and stock up in it. I'd stock up on enough for this year and for next year because we don't know what's gonna happen next year, right? Now, you can't grow a garden if you don't have seeds. Seeds are critical. Now, and, and Mama understands this. Lots, she's got lots, just a lots, few. Lots of seeds. But right now, we, we've seen this and we continue to see there's, there are supply issues, there's inflation issues. Um, it's best just to go ahead and get your seeds now and then you've got them for the future. And the ability to harvest your own seeds save your own seeds, Yeah, um, that's a great blessing too. So we recommend buying mostly open pollinated or heirloom seeds because they will produce a seed that the plant will be true to the parent, right? You're not gonna plant what you think is a pumpkin and get a gourd. Um, sometimes it doesn't matter, like it, you're gonna get a tomato if you plant a tomato. It might not be the same kind that you thought you were gonna get, but um, some of the other ones, you might get something that was once edible and it becomes inedible. So um, that's really important. Now, Jonathan mocks me. He makes so much fun of me because um, my daughter-in-law and Amanda and I, um, we do a little seed swap. I think it is so <laughs> cute. It's just like little kids sitting and having swapping baseball cards <laughs> and they swap this seed for this seed. And I think it's adorable personally, <laughs> but... It was a lot of fun because sometimes you don't need everything that's in one packet and it's a great way to build some of your diversity. And so I would really recommend getting with like-minded people and sharing some of what you have, whether it's knowledge or plant starts or seeds or whatever. But seeds are definitely a foundation. And I think that's why Jonathan is so patient with all my crazy seed lady, kind of plant lady stuff. And, and you know, there's a lot of old farmers out there who love the land. They love to farm, they love to garden and they'll probably just give you all kinds of seeds. They've got all kinds of advice, and you can check with your local agricultural extension office and get lots of ideas and, and information about when to plant, how to plant. Uh, they can get you started. And some libraries actually have seed swaps, like there are community seed swaps. So just go look around, start putting out the feelers, look online and see what you can find for something in your area because the solution isn't always to buy it, but for me, I, this is a huge security thing for me. 
And speaking of which, so I love survival garden seeds. I love their seeds, their variety, and the way that they're packaged. But um, I reached out to them this morning and told them I was doing this video to see if we could do a giveaway so that three of you guys can have some of the seeds that you need for your garden. So um, this is what they're giving away. This, this one's actually my favorite because it's got the most seeds, of course. And it comes in this bucket, but it's a farmer's seed vault and it has 100 packages. Um, of seeds and it's about $100. But if you use the promo code Provident Prepper, they give you 10% off anything. And so it, it actually takes it down to 90. And so when you're looking at a really good deal on seeds um, per packet, this is fantastic. Um, and then they also were giving away one of the homesteader ones. Well, actually survival garden seeds is, we're just telling you about it. Um, a homesteader packet that has 50 and then a home garden that has 30 packets of seeds in them. These are super great um, and you can just tuck them away if you want for a few years or you can use them right away like I like to do. Well, actually, these are my tucked away ones, but I have ones that I use every day too. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video to take you to the special page where you need to sign up. They're gonna ask you for your email so they can notify you if you win and your name, but they're not gonna get a lot of other information from you. It's just this wonderful little giveaway. So it starts April 7th, Friday, April 7th, and it goes through um, Sunday, April 16th at midnight. Once that date's over, it closes down and you can't enter anymore, but the winners will be announced on Monday, the 17th. So I'm super excited that we get to, to give away some seeds and help somebody else grow things. But I know that I'm a little bit crazy about this, but the more food that you can grow, the more you can help your neighbors grow, the better food security that we are all going to have during these absolutely insane times that we are living in. And one point that I want to make is that I, I talk to a lot of people and they say, yeah, you know, if I have to, I'll grow a garden. But that really doesn't work. Right now is the time to do that. Right now is the time to build your soil, mm -hmm. to meet like-minded people, to get advice and counsel and um, get going on this and, and make your mistakes because we all make mistakes. That's just part of the process, but you grow through those mistakes. So yeah, right now is the time to get this done. And if you want more information, I did a whole video. It's a class video. I know it's like 45 minutes long, but it's with a PowerPoint slide about how to grow your own garden, how to start, how to work with your soil, what, what crops you should select, and just some basic things that are really going to help you be able to um, be more successful. Don't be afraid of this because gardening is something that um, and growing your own food is something that can bring a lot of joy to your life. And it's actually not as hard as you might think it is. But you've got to get your hands dirty, right? You've got to get in there and, and learn how to do this. Right. And even if you start small, you know, a couple of pots of tomatoes or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. you can do, start. Take a step and then build on that. And so now for the question of the day. What are you going to do this year so that you can produce at least some of the food that you need to survive. Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.